guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part one of lesson 8.2. We're going to start doing some operations with matrices. Two objectives for this video. We are going to add and subtract matrices, and we're going to multiply matrices by scalars. So matrix addition and subtraction, for that matter, end up working out really, really nicely. In order to add two matrices of the same order together, all we're going to do is take their corresponding entries and add or subtract them together depending on what we're doing. Okay, now it is important that our two matrices have the same exact order. If they don't have the same order, then we are unable to add those two matrices together. So we would say that the sum is undefined. So we're going to try out some matrix addition in letter A. First thing I'm doing is checking to make sure that our orders match up. We've got two rows and three columns in the first one two rows, three columns in the second one. Those orders match up, so yes, we can add these together. So we're gonna start building our new matrix and we're just gonna add up individual pieces. So if we take first row, first column from our first matrix and first row, first column from our second matrix, well, one plus zero is one. And we're just gonna keep matching up corresponding pieces. So if we look at five and zero, add those together, we get five. Negative three and zero, we get negative three. Moving on to the second row, 0 and negative 3 is negative 3. 2 and 4 will give us 6, and 7 plus 1 is 8. So we get this brand new 2 by 3 matrix. If we look at example B, again, checking the orders, we've got three rows, one column on both of those things. So I'm just going to start adding pieces together. So we get 4 and negative 2, so that's 2. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3, and 0 plus 1 is 1. Now if we look at this last example, here we've got three rows, one column. Here we've got a two by two matrix. These ones do not match up, so this one is undefined. We are unable to add those two matrices together since they have different orders. Next thing we're looking at is scalar multiplication with matrices. So you might remember scalars from when we dealt with vectors. A scalar is just a number, so we're taking a matrix times a number, and the way we're going to do that is by multiplying every single entry inside of our matrix by whatever that scalar number is. Here we've got two matrices. We've got matrix A and matrix B. We're going to do a few different operations with those. First thing we're going to look at in part A is we're going to take three times matrix A. So this means we're going to take three times every single entry in matrix A. So it's kind of like a distributive property. We're distributing this three all the way through our matrix. So three times two is six, three times another two is still six, three times four is 12. Second row, three times negative three is negative nine. Then we get zero and negative three. Bottom row, we get six, three, six. In part B, we're gonna take negative two times our matrix B. So again, it's just like distributive property. Multiply the negative two by everything inside of our matrix. So negative two times two is negative four. And then we end up with zero, zero. Moving on to the second row, we've got negative two, eight, negative six. And bottom row, we get two, negative six, negative four. In letter C, the last thing we're doing is we're gonna take four times matrix A and then subtract matrix B. So I'm gonna look at doing that four times matrix A first. So if we distribute that four across the top row, we should get eight, eight, 16. Middle row is negative 12, zero, negative four. And bottom row goes eight, four, eight. And then we're gonna subtract off our matrix B, which is just the exact same thing that we had up above. So two, zero, zero, one, negative four, three, and bottom row is negative one, three, two. Now we should double check just to make sure that our matrices have the same order. These are both three by three matrices, so we can carry out that subtraction, and we're just gonna work with individual entries. So eight minus two is six, 8 minus 0 is 8, and 16 minus 0 is 16. If we look at the second row, negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. 0 minus negative 4 gives us positive 4, and negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Bottom row, 8 minus negative 1 is 9, 4 minus 3 is 1, and 8 minus 2 is 6. Now just like operations with regular numbers have properties, same thing going on with our matrices. So if we've got A, B, and C as matrices, and then we've got C and D as scalars, property number one, if we take A plus B, that should be the same thing as doing B plus A. That's our commutative property. 
Second thing on the list is our associative property, which means that we're allowed to regroup things like addition and subtraction. Three, we've also got an associative property with multiplication, so we can regroup those things as needed. For number four, a scalar identity. So if we take one times matrix A, we're just gonna get matrix A back as our answer. Five and six are showing examples of our distributive property. So we've got a couple of examples we're gonna run through. Top one, we're just adding a bunch of three by one matrices together. And I guess what I'm looking for as far as our properties go is using that commutative property. So doing this addition in whatever order we want. Typically what we would look for are things to cancel out. Top row, I don't see anything canceling out. So we've got four plus zero plus negative three plus negative three. So we end up with negative two if we add all those together. Middle row, I see some things canceling. The one and the negative one would cancel each other out. So we've got two and five, which is seven. Bottom row, we could cancel out the negative two with one of those twos. Then we just have two left over. So we get this new matrix, negative two, seven, two. Bottom example is using our distributive property. So we've got a couple of options. We could either distribute the three first and then add these two matrices together, or we could add up these two matrices and then multiply by three. And I'm actually gonna show it both ways. So I'm going to distribute the three first. So there's our two new matrices after we multiply by three. Then if we add these things together across the top row, we should get six and negative six. Bottom row is 21 and 24, so we get this brand new two by two matrix. Now instead of distributing that three first, let's say we wanted to add those two matrices together. So then we'd be taking three times some brand new two by two matrix, and that would be the matrix two, negative two, seven, eight, and then if we multiplied by three, we'd get six, negative six, 21, 24. So it doesn't matter what order we do those operations in. If we distribute the three first and then add, or if we add and then multiply by three, either way, we ended up getting the same exact answer. Last example, we're gonna do a little bit of equation solving with matrices. So here we've got the equation 2x minus 2a equals b, and x, a, and b all stand for matrices. And we know what our matrix A looks like. It's a 0, 3, 2, 0, negative 4, negative 1 matrix. And we know our matrix B is negative 4, negative 8, negative 2, 0, 14, negative 6. We want to figure out what that matrix X looks like. So if we set up our equation, we've got 2 times this matrix X minus 2 times our A matrix, which I'm just going to fill in all of that information, 0, 3, 2, 0, negative 4, negative 1 and that's going to equal our B matrix, which again, just filling in that information, negative four, negative eight, negative two, zero, 14, negative six. I'm gonna start cleaning this up a little bit by multiplying that two through matrix A here. So we end up with zero, six, four, zero, negative eight, negative two now as that matrix, and it still equals this B matrix. We're working on getting this X matrix all by itself. So our first step is going to be to add this matrix over to the right hand side. Our matrices on the left are gonna cancel out. So we'll have two X equals, adding these two matrices together, we get negative four, negative two, two, zero, six, negative eight as our new matrix. Then last step in order to get X all by itself, we have to divide everything by two. So just like we can multiply a matrix by a number, we can also divide a matrix by a number. So we are going to divide every single entry in here by two. So we get negative two, negative one, one, zero, three, negative four as our final answer for matrix X. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.